most of us are fearing snakes, spiders, darkness and strange men, and we are usually sexually jealous individuals. And monogamy appeared because women refused to have sex with men who wouldn't commit into raising their children. This current state of mind is a window for viewing what our ancestors had to face in their struggle to live and pass their genes forward. And after thousands of years of passing genes from your ancestors to the present, here you are, watching one of the most informative shows on YouTube. Hey what's going on guys, my name is Michael and you're watching Reading for Living, the show on YouTube for future millionaires and entrepreneurs. The most successful people in the world read about a book a week. If you want to do this also but don't have time, at least watch these videos and follow this channel, because I'll bring you the core information and ideas from the books that can change your life for the better. The book of this week is Evolutionary Psychology, The New Science of the Mind by David M. Buss and it provides an opinion on why we think and act in a certain way from an evolutionary perspective. Evolutionary psychology is a science that studies the way of thinking and acting in humans, a way that developed in this way because it solved specific problems of survival and reproduction that appeared over and over in the human history. Evolutionary psychologists are looking on the way humans adapted to the problems they had over time and are taking data from multiple sources. From modern evolutionary psychology by looking on problems of survival and growth or problems that appear in getting a human from childhood to the point where he is able to reproduce himself. Problems of mating which appear in uh, selecting a companion, reproducing with him and keeping him close to you. Problems of parenting which appear in helping your children grow until they are able to reproduce themselves and problems of helping uh, genetic relatives which appear when helping your kin who are not directly uh, related uh, with you but also carry your genes. Another source of information is from the knowledge of universal human social structures. People all over the world are and uh, have been living in groups and this posed some problems like making sure one is not cast out of the group, the competition for the same resources and reproduction or problems that come from social hierarchies, like getting ahead on the social ladder, preventing slips in your social status, competitors coming for your position and so on. Traditional societies such as hunter-gatherers also pose some problems that involved hunting large mammals. Such hunting could only be done in groups and people had to use clear coordination and communication. A fourth source of data comes from stones and bones which give information on diet or diseases our ancestors might have had. Another valuable source of information is by looking at our current psychological mechanism. For example, across cultures exists the same fear of snakes, heights, spiders, darkness and strange men, but not for cars, planes or electrical outlets. These fears come from survival problems our ancestors have faced. Also, sexual jealousy is common across cultures, which reveals that our ancestors might not have always been loyal to their partners. The last source of information comes from the fact that uh, we tend to help our genetic relatives like our children, grandchildren, nieces over the non-relatives like the children of our neighbors. Our ancestors needed to solve the problems of identifying those who carry their genes and how closely related they were. So let's get back in time for a bit. Now we tend to take most of the things for granted, like running water whenever we open the faucet, but our ancestors really had it hard and survival was an everyday struggle. One of the most important problems for humans was the obtaining of food and not just any food but the kind that wouldn't kill you. Food wasn't available or it was scarce while at the same time others were competing for the same piece that you wanted. Humans develop multiple adaptations while dealing with food, like the preferences for spices which kill harmful bacteria or the preferences for caloric rich foods. At the same time, we develop the feeling of disgust for certain foods or foods that are in a certain state of decay, but also mechanisms like uh, spitting, vomiting, sneezing or diarrhea. There is a difference between sexes that comes as an adaptation from our history regarding spatial orientation. Usually men were hunters while women were gatherers, which means that men would go out on the field trying to catch prey while women stayed at home tending to the house, the children and the plants around. 
these things led to an adaptation regarding spatial orientation where men outperform women on reading maps and navigation while women outperform men on fighting things in small places. Every habitat contained hostile forces which led humans to different types of fears. For these fears, humans have six behavioral responses. Freeze, flight, fight, submit, fright and faint. From these fears, we develop mechanisms like differences in perceiving height at the top versus on the ground or changing sounds in our environment as being closer than they are. Children as young as age 3 have a great understanding of death as a result of an interaction with a predator. This book then talks about mating and looks at the differences between long-term mating strategies versus short-term mating strategies. There are several differences of why men would choose long-term commitment. The first is because the rules set by women. Women would want reliable partners with whom they could raise their children, so men who wouldn't commit wouldn't attract women. Another is the fact that they would have more women to choose from rather than the other males who wouldn't want to commit and this way they would be able to get a more desirable partner. Across every culture, men have gotten standards of beauty which represent the woman's reproductive capacity, like signs of youth and health, clear and healthy skin, symmetrical features, full lips, small waist with round hips and a behavior that is full of energy. The standards for men also influence women to make themselves more attractive in the hope that they could get a more valuable companion. The second benefit of marriage would be the increase in certainty that the children the woman bears would be his own and not another man's. By being married, a man would have more chances into producing his own offspring and investing his resources in passing on his own genes than another man's genes. Also, the kids would have bigger chances of surviving and reproducing themselves as the fathers would arrange marriages for them. And of course, the social status gained by marriage as it's shown in many cultures. An interesting experiment showed that uh, when men were asked to speak on the phone with random women, whenever they thought that they were speaking with a beautiful woman, they unconsciously lowered their voice. This is also an adaptation from the fact that women prefer men with a deeper voice. So we talked about men's long-term mating strategies, but what about women's? Women had to adapt to different problems that men had to in order to ensure the survival of their children. Since women were stuck at home and needed to take care of their children, they needed to select their partners very carefully. This way women faced the problem of selecting a man who is able and willing to invest, who is able to physically protect the family from dangers or other men, a man who will show good parenting skills, who is compatible and also who is healthy. To these adaptive problems, women develop the following mindset. They look for resources in a partner, not just money, but the qualities that signal the ability for future acquisition of resources. But this is not enough, as the partner needs to show the willingness to commit. For this, love might be the answer, as acts of love show commitment to one particular woman. Of course, for ancestral women, commitment was not enough, because if the man is physically weak and easily downed by other men, then this could affect the resources of the couple. Tall, strong and athletic men would provide the protection that women sought. And another thing that women had to look for, and this is the same for men also, was the health of their partner. Therefore, the preferences for facial symmetry and the masculine face. Studies show that symmetrical features are correlated with health and also with physical attractiveness. As we might expect, not every relation was long term. As it turns out, our ancestral past was filled with affairs and short term relationships also. For ancestral men, it would mean that as many women they would impregnate, the more children they would have to pass on their genes. There is also a big difference between the desire of sexual variety between men and women across cultures where men desire it far more than women. There are different hypotheses of the benefits of women who would choose a short-term mating strategy. For example, exchanging sex for resources, getting immediate resources, protection through special friendships or status elevation. Replacing the current partner with the one the woman is having sex with, having a backup plan or even getting out of the relationship by making the man leave when he would find out about the affair. Also, there could have been a genetic benefit like better genes or more diverse genes for their children, especially if the current partner was lacking. Women could have used sex to evaluate a potential long-term partner or with the hopes to transform a short-term relationship into a long-term one. Another hypothesis would be to manipulate their current partner into committing more to the relationship or using it as a revenge. 
the context might as well have an effect on the short-term mating strategy. For example, a surplus of women tend to promote short-term mating for both sexes. Another context would be the one's desirability to the opposite sex. Men who are more desirable to women tend to adopt a short-term mating strategies, while for women this is not directly linked. Some studies show that women with a low desirability to men tend to adopt a short-term mating strategy. Next, the book talks about parenting. Mothers provide more parental care than the fathers and there are several hypotheses why this happens. One could be the parental uncertainty. From a man's perspective, there is also the probability that another man impregnated his woman. While the woman is 100% that the child is hers. The same case is for the grandparents of the children. The parents of the mother will be closer to the child than the parents of the father. And the most distant will be the father of the father. Another hypothesis is the mating opportunity cost for both sexes. While the father provides care to the children and is fighting off predators, he will have no time to secure other women for impregnating. Men can produce more children at a time by impregnating more women, while women can produce more children at a time by mating with a variety of men. Men have at least two sources of information about their paternity. One would be the sexual fidelity of the woman and the other the resemblance of the child to him. Studies have shown that the mother and her family tend to immediately inform the father that the newborn baby is a spitting image of him, thus ensuring that the child is his. Another study showed that men who perceive their children as resembling more like them tend to invest more in their children. This book talks about Hamilton's rule of inclusive fitness which explains how the altruistic gene would have survived. For example, selection would favor the altruistic gene, where you would give your life to save three of your four brothers and not just one, because those three would carry on more of your genetic material than just one brother would. But altruism evolved also despite Hamilton's rule of kinship as it is found between non-relatives. There are three other explanations why altruism could have evolved like this. Reciprocal altruism, you help me, I help you. Indirect reciprocal altruism, when others who heard about the altruistic behavior would help the person who's done the altruistic act. And cost signaling, which increases the social status of the person who's done the altruistic act. Friendship poses a problem that is described by the banker's paradox. Banks are businesses that loan money to people who need it, but people who actually need the money are the ones who have the worst credit risk and can't repay the debt. Banks end up loaning money to those who can repay back and deny the loans to those who need it the most. The same way when we most need the help from our friends, we are also unable to return the benefits to them. One key to this problem is to become irreplaceable to your friends, which means that if you provide your friends with benefits that nobody else can, they will have to help you as it would damage them also if they wouldn't. Next to friendship, people also formed cooperative alliances. These alliances survived by solving the problems of free riders. People who wouldn't contribute to the group but benefited from it would be punished. Aggression turns out to be an adaptive solution to ancestral problems such as resource procurement, defending oneself and his skin against attack, deferring rivals from future aggressions, intrasexual cooperation, hierarchy negotiation or mate retention. Aggression is more likely to occur between men and there are contexts in which it appears. For example, men being unemployed or unmarried, a context that leads them on the path of being excluded from mating. Or when a man's reputation is threatened, or when they suspect another male is making sexual advantages on their partner. Men also use aggression against their partners to deter them from future infidelity or to prevent them from leaving the relationship. Younger women with a higher reproductive value were more vulnerable to aggression because ancestral men would want sexual exclusivity to them. Aggression on women is especially used when the man has a lower reproductive value than the woman, such as low resources. Women rarely use physical aggression and when they use aggression it's usually verbal. Two derogation tactics used by women are calling their rivals promiscuous or making negative comments about their physical appearance, because these comments attack what men desire in a long-term partner. It seems that warfare appeared because of the primary benefit of having more access to women by the victorious men. Men have evolved some psychological mechanisms as adaptations to war. They spontaneously assess their fighting ability relative to others and appreciate other men who have good fighting abilities or who are brave in the face of danger. 
the book talks about status, prestige and social dominance. It seems that men favor a hierarchical society, whereas women tend to prefer an egalitarian one. Male children, as young as age 3, are forming hierarchical structures themselves. Historically, many high status had more wives, more sexual partners and more resources, and this instilled in them the ambition to get higher on the social ladder than it did in women. There is also a conflict between the sexes and it appears in different forms. For example, when a woman wants a long-term partner but the man wants a short-term relationship. It is thought that these situations evolve negative emotions such as jealousy or distress. Studies show that men interpret ambiguous signals such as a smile as a sexual advance from a woman. This is because of our evolutionary time. The cost for men for not understanding a sexual advance was higher than the cost of misinterpreting ambiguous signals. At the same time, women have commitment skepticism and tend not to believe a man's intention to commit to a relationship so they won't be betrayed by the men who are just looking for sex and are lying. Men tend to control economic resources worldwide and this is one aspect of what has been called the patriarchy. Women throughout history have preferred men who were able to gain and control resources and in turn men have competed with one another to do exactly this thing. Which also means that men are not united to control women but are in competition with each other to get women by having the things that women historically looked for in a man. Whew, well guys, this was quite an episode and I tried to give you some core information and ideas from the book Evolutionary Psychology – The New Science of the Mind by David M. Bass. But as you can imagine, there is far more information in the book. This is an interesting read because it tries to outline why we think and act in a certain way by looking at what our ancestors had to face in order to survive. If you have read this book and think that I should have talked about other things also, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you want to read this book yourselves, I put some links in the description with the place where you can find it. As always, like, share and subscribe if you like this video and see you next time.